orc, 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 orc. Hey guys, I'm Angela and welcome back to Hobby Night. This week in Warhammer news, there are more delays, but also some new miniatures, as well as a look at two upcoming Warhammer video games. At the beginning of this past week, Games Workshop announced on the Warhammer community site that there was going to be a delay in any pre-orders before the next couple of weeks. And they didn't be very, they weren't very specific about any of this. I assume that this delay in any pre-orders happening is due to the disaster that has been the Curse City launch and the delay in even, or not even delay, but like the limitations on the Bellacore launch let alone whatever else has been delayed, but they're not doing any new previews, which is probably good for them just so that they can maybe catch up. And I hope that they do in fact catch up and actually start getting product out to people because I know a lot of people are waiting on not just Curse City or other things, but just even older kits from last year and stuff that still haven't arrived to them. So I'm hoping they're getting that all under a wrap, but I imagine it is a number of things that are actually affecting this. I assume Brexit's still probably a problem. COVID is obviously still slowing a bunch of people down. We are still seeing delays, not just in you know the wargaming community as part of Warhammer, but we're also seeing it amongst other board game places and other toy factories and like that kind of stuff. All of these places are having delays and I'm sure it expands even beyond that. I'm just not as aware of it because I don't follow those products. But it's really unfortunate that this is happening. I just hope that they actually are able to use this time to catch back up and maybe actually make some announcements about what's going on with Curse City. When will there be more Bellacores available for purchase? Those kinds of things. Like some of those answers would still be nice for them to address or those questions would be nice for them to address. And I hope that they do. Let me know how you're feeling about it down in the comments. And while we were filming this news episode, GW announced that they were going to start having pre-orders available starting May 8th, which is great news. That means they're communicating with us. They're giving us some dates, which is excellent. And the first thing that's going to be up for pre-order is Hive War, the next expansion for Necromunda, which I think we've seen a little bit of already, and I'm expecting to see more of it in the next couple weeks as we approach the pre-order date. Exquisite symphonies. Bliss indeed. And we have barely begun. Let's talk about some of the new miniatures that are hopefully going to be coming soon now that we know pre-order dates are actually coming up. And the first ones we're talking about are the new Slanesh Greater Demons, the Talon and Voice of Slanesh. These models look spectacular and it gets me thinking because I don't know if these models are going to have rules for 40k and I'm wondering because we've already had the Keeper Secrets as a recent release for Slanesh Demons as a new Greater Demon model and personally I would actually like to see some like new Bloodthirsters. I mean I guess Bellacore kind of functions as one but a new Great Unclean one. Um, would be awesome. A new variation of the Lord of Change would be great. So I was kind of surprised that we were getting more demons. But then I got thinking, what if this is a hint towards Emperor's Children coming to 40k? What if when these models come out, maybe they do get some 40k rules and it heralds in some actual like Emperor's Children, which would be fantastic. Like I, I would love that. I would love to actually see those boys come back and see them get a codex or at least some support or something or some new models like it'd be glorious and these greater demons look like they would fit that aesthetic super well obviously it's Slanesh so of course but I just I would really love to see that overall though I am very excited for these models I actually I want to see how they build because I like the one with the open mouth, like I like the body of the one with the open mouth, but I actually prefer the like wing capes of the dual one, which has the closed mouth in the actual like kit. So I'm curious if you can swap them or if I can like easily kit bash them or something because I, I want to like swap them. I just think it would look really, really cool, but they are majestic. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Hey guys. If you are enjoying this video, make sure to hit that like button and let me know about it down in the comments. If you haven't already and you're wanting more content, make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon for notifications. And then if you want even more hobby goodness, make sure to follow me on Instagram or Twitter at hobby underscore night. Now, let's go ahead and get back to the video. Orc, 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 orc. We got a look 
at the Beast Snaga Orc Boys, which has some interesting connotations with it if you actually read the article, because in it, they talk about how these boys are bigger and than your standard Orc Boys, but not as like durable as a knob. So like, I'm curious if this means we're getting like Primaris Marines. Do you think we're gonna end up, or not Primaris Marines, sorry, Primaris Orcs. Like, I think that means we're getting Primaris Orcs coming soon. And I'm wondering, does that mean normal Orc boys are going to kind of get put to the wayside in the same way that like firstborn Marines kind of don't get used as much tournament wise. And we're just going to see like Beast Snagas converted into your normal Orc boys because I assume they're going to be more feral. If you look at the one model that they have shown us, he has some like skins and stuff on him, which is really cool. It's actually one of the reasons I'm interested in this faction so much because I really like the mix of those like leathers and skins and the, the feral Orcs mixed in with the 40k like lore and guns and I don't think they're going to have that many guns but there might be some so I really like that aesthetic that they're going for and I'm very excited to see what the variation of these boys are because I actually think it's been a while since orcs have gotten any new just boys models I know these aren't going to be specifically them because they describe them as being larger but it's been a while since orcs have gotten a lot of new kits so I'm glad to see that we're finally getting some Speaking of orcs, we got a preview of the Black Orc team for Blood Bowl 3, which is looking smashing. They have a lot, actually they don't have a lot of models, they actually specifically called that out in the trailer. They've got trolls, orcs, and then you've got some gobos, and that's pretty much it, but then you've got a lot that you can do with them. The trolls especially look like a lot of fun, and I like that they can like throw, you can, basically a lot of these units can throw the gobos with the balls and everything. So it looks like a blast. I can't wait to try them out, because I have been itching to play some Blood Bowl 3 when it comes out, and these might be a good team to try out. I also think it's really cool, because I think these models that they used in the um, game and everything are representations of the new models that they just released in the Blood Bowl Season 2 starter set that you can now get separately because those are also coming soon, I think, or are out. I can't remember now. Um, but there's a lot of cool stuff going on with Blood Bowl. I'm really into it, and I can't wait to play some more of it. Necromunda. Not a very nice place. Innumerable gun factories to feed the Imperium of Man. An endless sea of humanity, gang warfare, violence, and dogs. But the dogs are okay. We got a brand new trailer focusing on Hired Gun, and I continue to be hyped for this game. So they talked a lot about all of the various things that you can end up doing in this game, which it basically sounds kind of like a single player, um, uh, uh, Vermintide and everything because you're running missions, you're like gathering information, you're finding people, you're feeding your adorable Mastiff, your Cyber Mastiff. I'm really excited about the dog. Um, I always love when games have animal companions in them, especially in single player stuff. And this is definitely looking like that. And it looks like it's going to be a blast. They tried based on the trailer. It seems like they wanted to cram as much of the 40k like verse in as possible that was outside of like the space marines and stuff so there's going to be inquisitor stuff there's going to be um the enforcers are going to be there there's going to be some gene stealer cults there's going to be other like abomination and cults and everything that you're going to be going up against plus there's going to be like a bunch of just characters that probably have models and like spread throughout the various games and everything that you can see and enjoy in there which looks really really cool and the gameplay looks like it's going to be a lot of fun honestly like it just it's not gonna be very deep. I don't think there's gonna be some grand story, but it definitely feels like one of those games you can jump in and just be like, all right, I wanna run a mission or I wanna just go on like a murdering spree in this hive and just like fight through the mob of whatever. This is the game for you. And I think I'm probably going to be picking it up. Let me know if you will be down in the comments. All right, that has been this week for Warhammer News. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. I do wanna talk a little bit about the poll that I put out last weekend after doing the Curse City video. Um, it was actually very split, which was honestly surprising to me. I was expecting it to swing one way or the other. But that being said, I think for right now, I am going to hold off on Curse City for a bit, mostly because there wasn't a huge enough swing going towards it. Also, the metrics for it haven't been super great. So I wanna give it some time to see if maybe they're gonna like come out with more stuff. Now, that does not mean that I won't be painting more of Curse City in the future. I'm just not going to be focusing on it right now. And do not worry for tomorrow's video, because if you were wanting some Castlevania goodness, well, I've got you covered 
with a brand new painting video that I'm very, very excited for. So I hope you guys are looking forward to it as well. In the meantime, I have been Angela. You have been watching Hobby Night. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I will see you guys tomorrow in a brand new painting video. Bye.